Welcome back. Let's do a Darson Vall movement ammeter. Okay, so we can take a Darson Vall movement and use it to build an ammeter. So remember, a Darson Vall movement is, you know, there's a magnetic uh, bar with a coil wrapped around it inside of another magnet. And then there's like a spring in here, right? There's a bunch of weird junk. But this particular movement, when you apply, when you apply uh, 100 microvolts across this, these coil wires, you're going to get a 10 microamp current through the thing. And this is at full scale deflection. That's how they sort of describe these things. Like, what is the voltage current relationship? at full scale deflection. That is when the needle's all the way over, right? So uh, this particular meter was constructed to give this voltage current relationship when the needle is all the way pegged over to the side, right? So by Ohm's law, the apparent resistance, we could call it, of the meter is you know, um, the voltage over the current. So it's 100 microamps over 10, uh, I'm sorry, 100 microvolts over 10 microamps, it's 10 ohms. Okay, so this complicated device with coils and springs and all kinds of weird junk can be modeled with a simple resistor, okay, a 10 ohm resistor, all right? So, um, by the way, this is assuming that uh, this guy has a, so what is, uh, you know, V equals I R, so V over I is you know, R. And uh, this is assuming that um, the slope is, you know, it's 10. And, uh, you know, if this were a resistor, we typically think of as a straight, having a straight line uh, curve to it. So that's what we're assuming, we're assuming this to have. So that's another trick in making these things, right? Is constructing them such that, you know, this is as straight as possible. So that the scale, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna put a scale on here. This is gonna be zero amps. It's just gonna be the, what you label this thing. And then when it goes over here, what are you gonna label this? Like what, you know, what, you know, on the meter, you're just gonna write, you know, write, you know, on, there's a needle moving around and then you're just gonna write on this one side over here, you're gonna write zero amps. And then it goes over here, what are you gonna write over here? What is what is the what is the size of the meter, so to speak? Okay, so um, anyway, I'm just trying to right now, just trying to kind of review this basic idea of the Darce ball uh, movement and how it can be modeled as a simple resistor with with a a linear, you know, straight line relationship between the voltage and the current, like a resistor has, even though it's not really a resistor, it just looks like a duck. Sounds like a duck, walks like a duck, but not really a duck. But we're going to call it a duck. Ducks being resistors. All right, so what are we supposed to find here? We're supposed to... Um, so we're given... We're given... We're given this, you know, this meter. We're given this meter with these characteristics. And um, we're going to construct an ammeter with it. And we want to find, well, a couple of things. We want to show that I sub M uh, is one one hundredth of I measured. That is, the current going through the meter is one one hundredth of the measured current. So we've got to draw another picture here. So we're going to uh, construct a meter. using this Darson ball, using this Darson ball with these characteristics. By the way, we're finding something else too, but here, let me draw this picture. So we're taking this, this meter, I'm gonna draw a little box and then put an arrow on this. And this says, this says zero amps. And then there's a label over here that we don't know how many, we don't know how many amps it says, but this needle's gonna, 
you know, this needle is going to move like that and uh, you know measure somewhere between zero and so many amps as the needle moves around so what's really happening is there's there's i sub m the current going through the meter and then there's there's the measured current going into the whole um, ammeter and so let me back up a second there's i sub m the current going through the movement this is the darson ball this is the darson ball movement this thing um, but the whole the whole meter is this the whole ammeter is this okay this is this is the this is the ammeter and there's uh, there's a, a shunt resistor in here okay so this is an ammeter this whole box right here is an ammeter but we've taken a Darson ball movement and put it in parallel with a shunt resistor. That's how you construct an ammeter. You take a Darson ball meter and you put it in parallel with a shunt resistor such that you get the I sub N, uh, you know, the current through the meter uh, this way and the rest of the current going this way. So we're trying to show that this I sub M, the current that's going through the Darson ball movement, is one one hundredth of the current that you're measuring with this with this whole ammeter thing. Right? I measured comes in here and splits and then it, I measured comes back out over here. Right? You take this meter and you put it you take a wire and you put the meter, you know, with two wires coming in. So you're measuring the current coming down this wire, and it goes through the meter and then it comes out the other side. All right? So first thing we're trying to show is that only one one hundredth of the measured current actually goes through the movement. The rest goes through here. And you're given this value. So this is 10 over 99 ohms. All right. And you're given that, um, you're given these uh, voltage current uh, relationship. So um, I could even write that in here. This I sub M is going to be uh, it's going to be 10 microamps when across here is uh, 100 microvolts. That's this how this meter was constructed to appear to be a 10 ohm resistor, which means there's 10 microamps going through the meter when you put 100 microvolts across it. There's a lot of stuff going on in this problem, but here it is. All right, so we want to show this relation relationship. The second thing we want to show is we want to find the, the full scale label. That is, what's the max current that can be measured with this, with this thing? Okay, or the, um, the max I measured. In other words, kind of how big is this ammeter, right? How like big is the ammeter? That is how much, you know, what's the maximum current that you can measure with this with this ammeter? What's the maximum current you can put into I measured here, right? Because when you do that, when you apply the maximum current in here, this needle will peg, which means 10 microamps is going through this because that's how this thing was constructed. Okay, it was constructed to have full scale deflection at 10 microamps, right? So, you know, what's the maximum me current that we can measure? All right, let's try and do this. It's, there's a lot going on. Anyway, that's, you know, I could probably redraw this. Um, I'm showing the meter in here with the labels, but, you know, um, you know, you could you could redraw a little bit more, a little bit more simplified. You know, I guess just to take the time. I mean, really, we're we're um, we're we're simulating this whole movement with just a ten ohm resistor. Let's draw it that way. And uh, and we know that R sub S is ten over ninety nine ohms. And I measured is is something. I don't know what it is, but it's something. You could draw it like this, just a little bit better, and then a little bit simpler. I am okay. So you've got this measured current going into the whole meter, and then 
splitting and some goes up this way and some goes that way and then my measure comes out the other side. So um, I'm just going to jump right in and sh this is really a current division problem because they're asking what is the ratio of uh, you know this this thing how much of the current goes one way and how much goes the other which is what current division does. So current division says that uh, this I measured here is going to get split, right? And uh, and we could find how much I sub M is. It's going to be um, so I measured is split by uh, R sub D plus R sub S. And if we want to know what I sub M is, we put R sub S on the top, right? This is a current division problem. Is I measured comes in and is split and I sub M goes up this way and the rest goes that way. And to find I sub N, you'd put the opposite resistor on the numerator and the sum of the two resistors on the denominator. So um, what happens if we plug in the known values here? So R sub, um, well, I measured is unknown, but um, R sub S is known, it's 10 over 99. And um, R sub D is known, it's just, we're simulating a 10 ohm resistor and, the, and then R sub S again. So if you work this out, it's um, like you can, see so you can multiply 99 through, I think that's why they do this. So they give you these funny numbers so you can work that out. If you multiply 99 through, you get um, 990 plus 10, I measured. And um, this here is um, it's ten over uh, a thousand or one over one hundred. So 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 we've got it. So I sub m is one over one hundred. I measured. So you know, verified. We've shown that the uh, current through the movement I sub M is one one hundredth of the measured current. Okay, so you're putting in some current into this ammeter and one one hundredth of it goes up this way through the movement and the rest goes this way. So what's how big is this meter like? What should we put on these labels? Like what's the maximum amount of current that this ammeter can measure? Right? So that's um, it's a, that's the second question that's being asked here. What should we put on the full scale label here? What should we write on the box by the needle, right? There's a box with a needle in it and there's a label up here. Um, so uh, here, note um, that at, at full scale deflection, when the needle's out here, that's when I sub M is 10 microamps, because that's given. That's how this thing was designed to operate. So basically, I measured is. Um, just by using this right here, right, it's going to be 100 of times um, 10 micro. So 0 0.000, it's good to write this all out because this is 10 micro right here, right? Micro is 10 to the minus 6, so it's like this. So this is 0 0.001 amps. Uh, in other words, i.e., this is a... Oh, a one milliamp ammeter. Okay, kind of ugly, but you put a one milliamp here. This thing. you put a one milliamp. You write one milliamp by the needle. What that's saying is then when you put one milliamp into this ammeter, the needle will peg. Okay, and it'll point to one milliamp that you've drawn on there with a pen, right? So this ammeter will measure a maximum of one of one milliamp. And when you're doing that, 
you know, one one hundredth of that milliamp will go up through here and the rest will go through there. Okay, a little bit of an ugly, complex, kind of confusing type problem, but it gets a little bit worse here. Let's let's keep let's keep going a little bit, all right, because it's so fun. So we're gonna find just some more stuff. We're gonna find uh, same movement. Okay. Um, for um, you know what is um, R sub S for a one amp ammeter, right? Because right now, if you if R sub S, where is it? R sub S is uh, ten over ninety nine. Then you basically got a one milliamp ammeter, but in ammeters, you know the old. If you look at an old ammeter with a Darson ball movement and a, you know, a needle, it has a big switch. Well, even the new ones do, but they have a big switch. And which, when you're switching the switch, you're adjusting the range. And what you're really doing is flipping different resistor values in and out of the circuit. So, okay, so when it's on a one milliamp setting on the, on the switch, it means that you've switched in a 10 over 99 ohm resistor. And then if you flip it over to where, you know, a one amp scale, what, is, what resistor is getting switched into the circuit? Right? So let's draw that. In other words, um, what's the situation for a, a one amp meter? You've got a, got a meter, you've got I measured coming in and it's splitting. It's the same movement. So that means this is still um, through, through R sub D. This is still 10 microamps at full scale deflection. But what is the new what is the new R sub S? So now we've got one amp going in here, not one milliamp, but one amp, right? And same meter, so ten microamps going this way. So what will give you the same R sub S? So um, let's draw this out with values in there. So um, you've got one amp going in to this guy. You've got 10 microamps uh, going through R sub D. So you've got uh, 0.00010, 10 microamps going, uh, going this way. That means uh, going, you know, going through the R sub S. So this is R sub D, this is R sub S. Going through R sub S, you must, you must have Oh, 0 0.99999 amps, right? Because uh, if you take one amp and subtract, uh, you have too many nines in there. Two, three, four, five. Yeah, if you, no, I'm okay, right? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, one in here. You get one, right? You take one amp and you subtract 10 um, mi uh, microamps, you're going to end up with with this many this many amps going through R sub S. So we know the current going through R sub S. We also happen to know the voltage across R sub S because it's at full scale deflection. So it's still, uh, label it out here, this is still uh, 100 microvolts. Okay, so therefore R sub S by, you know, V equals I, R, R sub S is, 100 microvolts over 0 0.99999 amps or writing out all the zeros because this is one of the hardest part of the problem is all these zeros um, volts 100 microvolts over 0.99999 amps it's um, 100 over 999,990 ohms or 0 0.0001 ohms or 100 micro ohms. All right, so you've got this box and You've got all these different R sub S's and you've got a needle. There's zero amps on this side. And when 
when you put this 10 over 99 over here in here, this thing's gonna peg at uh, at uh, where to go. One microamp, right? And when you uh, when you uh, when you put in uh, when you put in a hundred micro uh, micro ohms, this thing will peg at uh, at one amp. Okay, so if I right when you uh, there's a switch on the meter, and when you flip it around, when you flip different resistors in there, that you'll you're able you'll able you are able to measure different. Uh, amps coming into the the whole thing, but uh, you know at full scale deflection, the voltage across both of these will be this, and the current through the this guy will be this. The, the changing resistor will be will be the, the current through the movement will be will be this, and the voltage across the movement will be this. That that's the same at full scale deflection. What what changes by changing these resistor values is that you're changing how much of the extra current is getting shunted away from the from the movement okay a little bit messy and just kind of i don't know maybe not so pretty this problem but uh you know it's a good it's a good problem just keeping the term straight what's the movement you know what does full scale deflection mean how do you construct an ammeter or you could break it down if you're getting confused and you want to study this you know study what is you know the meter, what, are the, what does full scale deflection mean? What does, you know, current division do? And, you know, things like that. And, and uh, you know, you can handle this okay. All right, I hope, hope that was helpful for you. All right, bye.